Hi, everybody. It is Thursday, and I am super excited to be going live today and interviewing, talking to one of my clients who has done what a lot of you are trying to do, which is to build a six-figure business. Um, so I'm excited to celebrate her, first of all, for making that achievement. Um, and we're going to talk today about how she did that, because I know a lot of you are trying to do that. And we're going to talk about how she did it, um, the ups and the downs of it, and um, and really just celebrate her today, because I'm super excited about it. I don't know if she's fully let it sink in yet. Have, have you really let it sink in yet? Uh oh, we can't hear you. We lost the fan, the sound for a second. We just had sound. <laughs> uh oh, we lost her for just a minute. We were just talking, y'all. Hold on, I think she's gonna log back in. Um, so her name is Callista. Fair. Her business is Callista Fair. She's Callista Tucker, and she is known as the Talent Fairy Godmother. Um, so I think she's gonna she's gonna try one more time. Let's see. Try it now. Can you hear me now? Now we got it. Okay. <laughs> now okay. we're cooking with gas. Technology. It's okay. Like, it is it okay. Happens. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yes. So Callista, tell tell us about yourself, what, you, what your business is, um, how you serve the world and who you serve. Yeah, no problem. So my name is Calista. I am your talent fairy godmother and I make magic for small to mid-sized businesses to help them connect and keep the best talent. So I do that through talent consulting, um, training and development and recruitment, and also will do the implementation for the organization as well. Um, so not just necessarily consulting with them, but we'll provide the action plans and do the recruitment processes for them as well. Um, I'm originally from Seattle, Washington, born and raised. Um, I graduated from an HBCU and I know you did too. So shout out to those. <laughs> and I um, live currently in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I did go to school in North Carolina and spent the bulk of my 20s kind of in the Carolinas um, in, in Pittsburgh now. And so that is who I am and what I do. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a friend. I love food. <laughs> That's a little bit about me. And if you've seen um, her social media page, she is a fly mama. Um, <laughs> I was just looking at your Mother's Day pictures. I was like, you better work it, ma'am. <laughs> Um, y'all have to check out her page. She's like, she was out, you were out on Mother's Day in this like, this blue dress. I was like, okay, let me yeah, see. So there's a website called um, Soak and Sipa. It's like online, it's like black owned. And I wanted to do something different. I felt like Mother's Day, especially um, being COVID last year, it was like right in the middle of it. So I couldn't really go out or do too much of anything. And so I was like, you know what? I want to do something nice for myself. So I got a nice new hat and outfit and uh, that's what I did. So while we're talking about you doing something nice, well, actually, you know what? We're going to come back to that. We're going to put a pin in that. Because um, I was trying to remember first, like, how, how did we get connected? Because we, I remember we first talked in, I think it was September, but how did we, how did we get connected? Do you remember? Yes. So two ways. One, I had saw you before because the person that I was using, Jody Brown, shout out to her who did my brand photos, mm -hmm. I did see you on her page. So okay. I had you in mind and just kind of like saw your pictures and everything like that and was like, oh man, she's cool. Um, but then secondly, one of my good friends, um, Tiffany, her old roommate was one of your clients. And so she was telling me about her right. and how she was able to do a lot with her business and so on. And I was thinking of how can I kind of 
set my business apart and put certain things in place before I launched. So I reached out to you um, a couple months before my website came out just to make sure that what I was putting out there was reflective of what I wanted to do. And I think that even going in, I was doing a lot of other things that I thought that my business was going to have like seven services. And we kind of <laughs> narrowed it down to these are the things that you want to focus on specifically for businesses. And I feel like that particular session did like set me up in terms of a framework for how my business is structured now. So first of all, shout out to Jody because she is amazing. You guys, if you're Actually, you don't even have to be in the Charlotte area because you were in Pittsburgh and you yep, came and down to North there, Carolina yeah. and did your brand photo shoot with her. But Jody Brim Photography is amazing. Um, if you've seen, if any of y'all have seen my photos where it's like me in the orange, like sh shoulder out, giving them a little something. Um, those were photos. <laughs> those were like some of my first photo shoot, brand photo shoots that I did with Jody Brim. Um She's amazing. And she did Callista's big brand photo shoot when you were launching your business. Mm -hmm. um, so she's amazing. Let me let me just ask you, because we we first we did your first session um, right before you did that photo shoot. Mm -hmm. So how did that like because we talked about a lot of stuff in the, in that session, like how did that help prepare you for your photo shoot? Because you already had kind of some ideas about what you wanted to do. But what did that, what did, I guess, how, how did that, how did that help you for the photo shoot? Yeah. So I would say I already somewhat had, you know, I knew my brand colors and my layout and kind of knew the type of look that I wanted to go for. But I think what set it up was also like how these photos were actually going to translate on a website. And so when we met and did that kind of four hour strategy session, it really was like pulling together all of these pieces of, okay, your business wants to do X. And what I was doing previously to raise money for my business was doing like resumes and business coaching and interview tips um, and was thinking that in some type of way, I was also going to incorporate that in trying to sell myself to corporate clients. And I think that that is where the strategy and kind of pulling back the onions in our conversation really kind of made it so that that is great, but let's put that on hold for now and just focus on the business and the branding. So I think that in that session, when we worked on, you know, my packaging and talent fairy godmother was birthed out of that um, I even, you know, which went, now you like, are getting trademarked. Yeah. And I actually did an application with the lawyer in February for Talent Fairy Godmother so that I could trademark that. I had already had a shirt made of like problem solving made easy in my brand <laughs> photo shoot, but changed it up to where I got like a speaker badge made with Talent Fairy Godmother and was able to have my website designer change um, the tagline to Talent Fairy Godmother so that it was incorporated in some of the photos as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that really um, set it apart. But then I believe that there was so much more empowerment that came from being in the photo shoot because I really knew specifically, okay, when I take these pictures, you know, and I'm, you know, had different people that were staging where we were doing like some Zoom videos or I was doing a conference. Um, I think that also that kind of set it apart as well to make sure that the pictures really showcase the work that I do um, and going in with knowing like, okay, this thing is really coming together and these are the services that I have. And this is also how I want it to be exuded in the pictures that I'm taking. Mm -hmm. So, let me ask you this, um, because I, I I mentioned to you before we started this live, like I was looking back at some of my notes from when we first talked in September. You had some goals for your business back then. One of them I saw was to be a six-figure business, specifically 
it was a little bit over six figures you wanted to do um, by 2022. Mm-hmm. You've already done that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think that you would you would do that this soon? No, no, <laughs> no, not at all. I, I, to be honest, I thank God every day. I'm just like, thank you, God. This is like really my life. And I, I, I really, you know, have told people a little bit about my story and even recently did a post that I shared with you way back in January that I didn't even publicly share um, when I got kind of my third or fourth contract. And I think what probably is the biggest realization for me is that, you know, I've experienced like four different job losses in the last like four years. Um, Back in 2016, I was making like $25,000 a year working part-time at a university. So to be in the position now to be making the type of money under my own business and my own umbrella after leaving a bad corporate experience and I was looking for work and that was the whole reason why I rebranded my business and not being able to find something. It's mind blowing to me (laughs) to really look back on you know, people say all the time, like, look back and and where you came from and look back. And so to really look back on, like, where I came from and really see what that looks like and Mm -hmm. to know that now I'm able to be in a better position for myself, I'm also able to be in a position to help other people create a legacy for my son, who will be two next month, you know, thinking about the future for him. That, to me, is just like, okay, this is where I have to, to be. Yeah. Um, what, what were, what were some of the challenges that you came up against in getting to this point? What were the hardest parts? So in developing, when I first was branding and deciding that I was going to do this, like I was looking for work, couldn't find something for six months and made it to the final round of interviews for like eight different positions. So after that, it was like, I can't wait for somebody to hire me. And I was taking a class with like Bank of America and Cornell on women entrepreneurship and just decided, you know, with prayer and kind of talking to my husband in my village and, you know, different people that were really um, helping me kind of guide me. Um, it was really interesting to say, okay, are you going to take this course just to take it and just to say that you're having a certificate? Are you really going to apply it to actually be something? Um, And so, you know, interesting to talk to friends like, you know, Tiffany and Dominique, people that like really know me to say like, we always knew you were going to be a business owner. You were going to do that. You know, my parents own businesses, but I just never felt like entrepreneurship was me. And so, You know, I never really, even before when I had a business, I always saw it as like a side hustle. Um, I never thought that it would be like my bread and butter. So Mm -hmm. in kind of just making up a package to raise money to pay for a website and photos and iPads and all that stuff, like I didn't pay myself from May until December of 2020. So to be in a situation where all of those months are passing and you're getting money coming in, but you're not paying yourself a dollar. (laughs) That was challenging. And to really be in that type of space and also to say, you know, are people really going to buy into this? Are they really going to be able to see that transition? Um, But really 2020, my word for that year was confidence. And I feel like all of the confidence that I felt like I lost in a bad work experience and feeling that I wasn't valued because somebody else wasn't hiring me, I really was gaining like my own sense of self and really knowing like my own worth and value and what I bring to the table. And Mm -hmm. so that is to me what was the biggest like challenge was overcoming me. 
how do you think what what helped you to overcome that though um I think really seeing the results because even when I was doing these corona hack packages packages where I was helping people with interviews and resume tips from being a recruiter for over 12 years I was seeing people come back to me everybody almost like over 98 percent of individuals got hired their salaries increased they got new promotions people that were laid off got jobs and to me it was almost a step back in you aren't even in a position where you're doing that for yourself but you've helped 40 and 50 people during this COVID time frame. And I think that that's when I started realizing like, okay, the work that you're doing, you know, matters and the things that you have matters and really realizing um, my own strengths. Mm -hmm. And remind me again, how much were you charging back then? <laughs> so... When I did my first Corona hack package where it was, um, it was a hundred dollars. And then around August, September, I upped it to $300. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And cause yeah. Cause when we, when we met and we were working on your packages, what, what what are your what are your what is your average contract or package now? So there are packages that range from like twenty five hundred to like sixty thousand, and probably you know the average or so um, is probably between like five to like eight thousand. But you just got a contract mm -hmm. for 20000 20000 To do a training. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And we were selling $100 packages <laughs> less than a year ago. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think even saying it out loud makes me be like, wow, like you were, man. I maybe lost a whole year worth of money. You know, I, I think um, I think in working together and being able to see, I knew the work that I did in businesses that I worked for. I knew that I like increased diversity by over 60% or had positions that were open for a year to two years that I actually filled in a three month time frame. Like I knew that I, did those things for very large organizations. Um, but to see myself and how I was going to package it and frame it for me, I think mm -hmm. that that was where I still kind of thought that, oh, well, I can still do resumes and interview tips because that's what I've done as a recruiter. Mm -hmm. But knowing that that wasn't necessarily going to be sustainable for a business is where kind of the restructuring was very helpful when we connected of, you know, these onesie twosie things, like you would have to have 10,000 clients <laughs> in order to make X. And yeah, you're also having to do a lot more hands-on kind of work with each individual person. And so being in a position to work with people more like long-term and, you know, provide training to them or working with leaders or helping them with their talent and recruitment processes where, you know, we're doing X number of hours within a week or a certain number within a month. It definitely has made a lot more flexibility with being, you know, a mom and being a wife and having so many other layers Mm -hmm. of myself as well. So it definitely has made me think now I was having a conversation earlier with somebody today of, you know, how can I scale my business to now employ people so that I can end up passing some of this kind of client work off to individuals and so on. So 
mm-hmm. just expanding even my mindset to know that because I have reached six figures and I never made six figures in another organization. So to say that I'm doing it within myself is is really um, empowering. Yeah. What what would you say? What would you say you've learned about yourself in this process? That I'm definitely a lot more innovative and business oriented than I think I gave myself credit for. Um, I would say also my last job um, had me really devalue my worth because I think a lot of my, you know, validation was like, how does this manager see your performance or how are you meeting these benchmarks or how have you been scored where even though that I was producing, having a bad management experience really made me say, like, Calista, you are not <laughs> all that you think that you are. Um, but I think that, you know, God really had to work with me. And also having a great support system in Village has made me say, like, no, you are able to do great things for organizations and own that and want to step out there. I think Mm -hmm. also being unafraid now in, can I talk to this company? Can I meet with this board? Can, will I submit a proposal to this organization? Like now it's like, yeah, I can work with anybody. I know what I know and I understand that I'm the talent fairy godmother and I make magic. And so yes, you <laughs> I do. Think that, that is <laughs> the the strong kind of onus that I have now that I didn't have before. Yeah. What was um what would you say? What would you say is different about how you approach your business since you I guess, made the decision to invest in coaching um, versus before? Because I know you said you had done the entrepreneurship course and you had been doing your business on your own. Really, you started, what was it, back in May of last year? Yeah. So I think really what it was, was I've had business coaches through programs or you know, mentorships or volunteers, but I had never actually invested in a coach. And I thought that that was interesting because I have coached people where people have paid me to coach them, but I never paid for a coach. (laughs) So in knowing that I had a business previously and number one, it was more so on a break even and I knew I didn't want to be on that track again, but I had a lot of subcontractors in the way that I Um, had my business structured wasn't the best. So I wanted to change that. And with taking different coaches and so on and so forth um, and courses, that was able to like really help me in that way. I think the thing that made the biggest difference was when we met and to really know that some of the things that I thought these $100 or $300 packages was going to take me to where I wanted And having somebody to really say, actually, it has to be structured in this way and this way because you work with businesses and that's what you do and that's what your strong suit is. And um, I know that there's a saying that people say all the time is more so of if you want to be a millionaire, then you have to hang around millionaires. And if you want to expand yourself, you have to be in in a position to do that. And so knowing that there was only so much that I knew with free information or coaching and I'm very resourceful, have always been a networker. So I would get everything free that I possibly could, (laughs) but knowing is that going to be something that's going to take me to the next level Then I knew that I had to do something different. Um, And even that 
you know, small session that we did at first really set me up to do so much more and have a bigger mindset of the things that I could do. It did have me turn down uh, people or opportunities to say, actually, I don't do that anymore and I can't do this particular service. But now that I'm on the path that I'm on, I think reinvesting and making sure that I do have that um, is also something that I'm looking forward to because I understand that there's only so much that I can do by myself. And just like I'm helping organizations because they're trying to do what they have done um, by themselves and they need help. Um, in order to get to that next level um, and seeing the results and the revenue coming in and the proposals that are having, I know now like I have to invest in order to take myself from six figures to seven figures. Yeah. And y'all, um, Calista did just re like she had invested before, but like now that she's at this level, she's, like invested at a higher level because like she just said, when you get to a certain level, you've in order to get to the next level, you've got to invest at a higher level. You've got to invest in yourself at a higher level to get to the next level. And it's something that I've done myself too, because I'm like, just how, like you were talking about, like you've done coaching before you coach other people. Um, just like me, like I, I, Every time that I get to a next level in my business, I invest at a higher level because I know that I need that much more mentorship in order to get to my next level, too. Um, I want to talk about some of your your wins because I want to celebrate you some more because I don't know that you have fully celebrated <laughs> your wins. And, you know, we love to celebrate up in this camp. So um, besides the fact that you have hit six figures in your business. And just in the last four months, you've hit almost ninety thousand dollars. Like <laughs> you're sitting here laughing. Like I don't no, know if you really it's have it's like, it's sinking in. <laughs> I need it to sink in. Yeah. I need it to sink in for you. Um, like you have been, you've won grants. You've been getting speaking opportunities. You got recognized by your alma mater. I'm just, I'm just trying to think of stuff off the top of my head. Let's see. Um, we have no credit card debt. Yes, you credit paid off credit card debt. Yeah. <laughs> now I have um, the money to do so. <laughs> you are now a. Um, you're doing stuff with Forbes, right? Like um, Forbes. Forbes Consultant. Forbes Fund, it's a um, it's a local nonprofit here. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Forbes Fund Consultant. Um, yeah. You've had people from your childhood reach out to you to work with you. Yes, just recently. Yep. And they, like, how did that feel? Um, I think it was really interesting. So um, she just let me know that she thought about me. You know, had a dream, which is very ironic, but. Um, she just had something that we were working together and she looked me up and she has a business and needed some recruitment and talent needs and didn't even know that that's what I was doing. I haven't talked to her in probably over 20 years. So to see even that connection and how I'm being aligned with the right people, um, I just continue to thank God for putting me in places with who I need to connect with. Mm -hmm. um, I even recently, same thing, had somebody that I posted something in another group and they reached out to me and I just did a training for their company last night. So even just thinking about how sometimes we might not even realize um, that people are watching you or yep. the things that you're putting out there are bringing other opportunities to you. Um, that has been interesting as well. Yeah. That's what happens when you show up. When you show up, when you're consistent, like you have been, um, people are paying attention. They're watching you. You're impacting lives. Even people who may not be paying you yet, um, they're watching what you're doing and you're influencing. 
people that you may, may not even realize you're influencing. Um, and this month, really, um, yeah, go ahead. was uh, the biggest month that I hit financially. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And because of your financial success, you've been able to do some things for your family besides paying off debt. Like, and there's some things I know that you had set goals for yourself to celebrate once you hit some milestones that you're being able to do now. Yeah. Um, and I told you, I was, I went back and I was looking at some of our note, my notes from the first time we met and you're checking off some of those things that you said you were going to do or that you wanted to do when you hit some of these milestones, you're actually doing them now, but you thought you weren't going to be able to do them. You said by 2022, which yep. is really interesting that, yep. you know, we're, we're not even halfway through 2021 and you're already doing these things. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think that that is what is kind of mind blown to be in that position. Um, and to, to be in a position where, you know, you set goals and kind of think, okay, it's going to take me this long to get here. And now I had to change my goal, like, because I'm pretty much already at probably at the end of this month at where I said I wanted to be two years from now. Yeah. So, I mean, to, to be in that position, you know, less than a year of launching is like, okay, well, that little goal that I said that I want to meet of 120,000 by 2022, well, now let's reach the 160,000 by the end of 2021, you know? So now I'm kind of thinking bigger and broader about um, how I think about goals and, and how I need to accomplish them. Yeah. More is possible. Yeah. More is possible. So, let me ask you, um, what would you, what, what, what do you want to tell people that are watching? Um, what do you want to leave them with? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I just was on a session where it was said, um, Oh, have had a jobs forum, and it was said Jamal Pastor Jamal Bryant was on there, and had mentioned that creatives are birthed during COVID, and mm -hmm. that is something that happened with me, <laughs> you know, like really being creative about how you how you innovate yourself and and thinking bigger and broader about who you are, and I think just going after it. Like if you have a goal and something that you want to do, I knew at some point in time that I wanted to do something with my business, but I didn't know that having to step away from a corporate position would allow me to provide the space to actually do it. Um, so even if you've had a job loss, even if you're taking care of kids, even if you're in school, that you can take the time to exercise your passion and invest in you as a person in order to get you to the next level. And no person, no teacher, no naysayer, um, that $100 package that you have can be a $2,500 package. You know, none of those things can stop you um, because you're capable and you're valued and there are people that will pay what you're worth. And if they're not, then they're not the right client. They're not your people. They're not your people. That's that's awesome. Um, and I've told you that I know this is just the beginning. You're just beginning to scratch the surface. Um, I have no doubt that this will not be the only case study interview that we do. <laughs> Um, cause you were like, isn't it too early to do this? And I was like, no, yeah. 
So no, this is way too early. You can't do a I'm case like, study no. on me. I ain't done nothing yet. I'm like, yes, you have. Um, and that's the thing. Like, people need to see the different steps in the journey because there's some people who, you know, are just starting their business and they think that it's going to take them, you know, years like you did to hit their first big goal. And they need to see people like you who did it much faster than they thought it was possible. Um, and then we're just going to show them, you know, in who knows when, when you hit your next big one or, you know, something else, you know, amazing happens, what's possible there. So I'm just excited to see what that's going to be. And we're going to keep celebrating you as those things happen. Yeah. And I think it's important to, I am nothing without those behind me that um, are my board members that aren't really on my board. <laughs> those sounding <laughs> boards that you're having to talk to, those people that, you know, I'm having an idea in the middle of the night in text, you know, those individuals, um, you know, my husband for always kind of being that person to, to listen and support and be able to say like, okay, this is what you want to do and, you know, support that. I thought that I was crazy to be in a situation. I was like, I don't know what he's going to say when I'm like, I want to start a business and I'm not working and haven't been for six. Like, what does that look like? How is, you know, that going to work? But to have, you know, a very like supportive spouse and to have friends and people around you to pour into you um, and pour into your goal and your vision. You know, those same mm -hmm. people that are being referrals for you or sharing a picture or liking it and or, you know, sending your information to somebody that says that they need your services. Like all of those little things matter. Yeah. And I definitely think that if you don't have people in your circle that are like that to get them, even if you have to get it from outside sources, um, because it's definitely really important. And I think that in building what I'm doing now, um, those individuals are expanding for me outside of people that um, are my friends that I would go to brunch with or go on vacation with, that I'm actually getting individuals that are men and women that are in the business field or in the sector that I can kind of call on and rely on and, and be soundboards for me as well that are outside of my friend group because those are individuals that I'm seeking to to grow and, and be like and, and get something from. Um, so I think kind of being unafraid to step outside of your own environment is important. Um, yeah. I saw a post, it was a meme that said, like, your friends are not your target audience. <laughs> so, you know, I know, you know, who my friends are, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're my clients. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's so important that you brought up community. That is a huge part of how we're able to create the success that we want in our business the people that you have, because it's, it gets, and I talk about this all the time, it gets really, it can get really lonely um, mm -hmm. in this process of building your business. And especially when you were talking about like, you know, I have this crazy idea that I'm trying to, you know, do these big things or this thing that I'm trying to create. And we hit those stumbling blocks sometimes. And then there's not people really that get it when we're trying to talk through this thing that we're, you know, coming up against or the feelings or the thoughts that we're having and we're trying to talk through them and we don't really have anybody that understands what that's like or that we can just talk freely about what's going on in here and up here with um, that's not going to judge us for those things. Um, and that's why it's it was so important for me to create spaces um in particular for women entrepreneurs to be able to, to do that. Um, and so in every one of my programs, it I there is a group component for that. Um, and you just you just joined our mastermind, the Evolve Mastermind, where we we do that. Um, 
but I also have the branded and booked accelerator, which we just wrapped up um, cycle two. We're about to start cycle three at the end of this month, um, which you'll be in as well. Um, I mean, so all the nuggets, every you place, all of, all of, <laughs> everywhere you could get it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if I just encourage people, if you don't have a space like that, where you can, can have a circle of, of fellow business owners where you can have those spaces where you can, where you can just, you know, be vulnerable and be open, you know, and it's a safe place to do that. You got to find a place like that. And I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to feel like I want to have to pay for a place like that. I'm telling you, it's, it's hard to find a free one. <laughs> I'm just telling you I've tried. Um, and, and there's, and I've been, and I've even been in paid ones where it's, it's hard to foster that type of culture. Yeah. Um, and I've just been really blessed that I've, I've been able to, I'm very selective with the people that I bring in because I want to have, I'm very, I'm very intentional about making sure that it's, it's a place because I know I needed a place like that. And I want to create that for other people. Um, so I'm really glad that you talked about that because it's really important. Um, because we need that. We yeah. need it. I mean, my husband is tired, okay? Of me talking about, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, babe, oh, look at this package. What do you think about this? I mean, of course, being there and understanding and so on, but that's not his that's not his mojo and that's not what he does. And he's not doing the work that I do. He doesn't create proposals. He's not uh, doing leads with people or trying to do marketing for your business on social media. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's interesting to be in a space of talking with somebody and definitely he'll listen and give constructive feedback, but it's different when you're in an it's environment and you can talk to people <laughs> that are actually doing it and you all can bounce off of each other because there's a lot of things that you're doing that are similar or somebody has tried something in their business that works and, you know, you can kind of adopt that idea or vice versa. And I think that it, it definitely is different when you're in that, in that space and in that environment, because people that are entrepreneurs are wired differently. And, you know, not everybody yeah. that, you know, um, there are people that are going to be cheerleaders and people that are going to be coaches and people that can be partners and collaboratives in that space. And so to me, I think that that is the huge difference um, kind of in having those people that can really understand. Cause you can call your own girl and be like, oh my gosh, I just got this contract and I'm about to write this proposal and I'm putting this stuff and they'll be like, oh yeah, that's great. But like they can't foster what that means and what that does. Cause that's not who they are and what they do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, with that, I just want to thank you for sharing your heart and sharing your journey with me and with everybody who's watching and who will watch this. Um, because I think it's going to really encourage and help people to see a little bit of themselves in your story. Um, so I thank you for that. And I celebrate you for you. what you have created thus far and what you are continuing to create because you are super dope just in case just in case I hadn't told you that lately Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah and I think now especially you know like my son will be to June 20th and I'm looking at you know him I look at my husband all the time and I think about with the job losses and the influx like what can I do to even say thank you for going on the roller coaster with me? And I mean, we was on it, <laughs> didn't get off for a while. You know, what, you know, what can I do to even say thank you? Um, and so now the work and the hustle and the drive um, is also not just for myself, but also, you know, what can I do for them and what can I do for, you know, other people? And especially I think, being black um, and being a black female, also what can I do for people that look like me to provide spaces and opportunities to know that 
you don't have to be pigeonholed to just saying, I have to get a job and get a 401k and I'll be okay. Like, if that's what you want to do, that's great. But if there's more that you have in you, then go for it. Amen. Well, thank you again. Um, and that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I really appreciate it. All right, everybody, y'all have an amazing week and um, be on the lookout for more of these case studies because people are winning out here in these streets and I want to share them with y'all. So thank y'all for joining us and have an amazing week and go out there and just do the dang thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>